Let me thank all of our presenters for all staying within time. I've never seen such a thing. So it can, it can be done. And what that means, if I'm, we started at about 25 till, is that we have a full 20 minutes now for, for a Q&A. Um, I do want to go back to the questions um, raised by Dr. Escobar and by David Perkey that, relating to the broken nexus and to some of the issues around legal. But I, let's open up the floor. And before we do, can I invite our panelists to come up here and just take a place up here? And Trusset, if you would like to join as well, uh, you've been participating in the urban metabolism. And I think we need a microphone. 15? Okay, we st okay, that's fine. 15 minutes, but that's, that's fine. Um, and what I'll ask is that we'll open up the floor here, and I hope we can get a microphone up here. Um, if you could simply uh, you know, perhaps state your name uh, and state your question as succinctly and clearly as you can. And if it's directed toward one of the panelists, um, please, please identify that panelist. Or if it's to any or all, um, then we allow all to join. So with that, the floor is open. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Do we have a microphone up here, though? Does this one work? All right. This is our microphone, people. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. <clears throat> Jacob Granit from the Stockholm Center. Uh, thanks for this presentation. I think that they're very good because they actually all of them address the question raised by by David. Should we engage in the in the essential policy process, process with our tools and <clears throat> and models? And uh, the presentation by Brian is clear on that. I think because if we do not understand the broader political economic context, even the economics will not really help. So the question is if we need to supplement some of our work with with a more um, <clears throat> developed uh, way of addressing the political economic situation, both at the national level, uh, local, of course, but also regional, in order to address these multiple problems we have related to water law in California or, or in, in the more much more complex Jordan basis. So it seems to me that I think we need to think in two tracks always. One is the model, the biophysical world, but also uh, exploring ways and means to address these more complex, broader political economic issues, which I think was also raised by Eric in the question in, in, in Bangkok, because without understanding them, we will not be, it will be very difficult to provide any real advice and guidance in these processes. Thanks. Would anyone like to respond? Or shall we take a couple more questions? Okay, let's take a couple more questions. Back there. I apologize if I don't know your name. So. Thank you. Anya Grabitsky, Global Water Partnership. This was a really wonderful session, and thank you so much for um, all the information on these various excellent projects which SCI is undertaking. Um, I can see why, why WEEP has changed David Perkey's life, I think. <laughs> um, I was very taken by this idea of the broken nexus. Indeed, there are many, many river basins where the nexus is broken, and uh, if WEEP can help to to rebuild it and put the pieces together, um, then that's a, that's a huge service. But first of all, um, my, my first question is really to David. I have, I have two questions. Um, well, firstly, congratulations on this tremendous success in getting a contract with the state board and in stepping into these murky waters of, of the law. Um, it sounds to me as though perhaps uh, SEI might need some liability insurance when <laughs> <laughs> now that uh, you're going to be dealing with, the, with these really um, real-life issues. But I just wanted to ask you a bit more about that. Um, how do you see this actually affecting SEI's work? Um, are you bringing water lawyers on board within SEI or will you be doing it in partnership? Um, and just to hear a bit more about how you see this area of work expanding because it's a fantastic practical application of this science policy interface. My second question is really to, to Jenny Barron. And um, Jenny, I was fascinated to hear about this, this TAGME, uh, the, the decision support system and the way in which it's been applied in the Volta Basin and the river base, the, the Limpopo River Basin. 
Um, given that the challenge program will now be phasing out, I wanted to ask you what uh, plans there are for actually perhaps putting this decision support system on a more stable platform because it would be a tremendous pity um, if this was not to be further applied. Have you thought maybe of linking with the River Basin Commissions in order to, um, to for them to use this as, as a platform to have that, the, that basis of the technological choice um, available to them in the future? And I just wanted to mention that if if you are thinking in that direction, then perhaps GWP can help because we do have a strong link with the River Basin Commissions and also with ANBO, which is the African Network of Basin Organizations. Thanks very much. Great. Let's take one more and then we'll have some responses. Do we have one more question? Yes, right there in the middle. Thanks, uh, Richard's Client, Stockholm Environment Institute here in Stockholm. Um, question also to David. You you asked the question uh, whether you know there's there's basically if there's a risk if uh, SEI then also applies weep uh, you know in terms of legal uh, legal issues. Um, is there also a similar risk if others apply weep? In other words, I mean, does it really matter? Is the risk with the fact that weep would yield certain results, or is the risk really with the people who actually apply it? I mean, what would be the distinction? And if that's the case, I mean, if WEEP is going to be applied and its results are going to have legal significance, then, you know, that liability insurance might be needed anyway, even <laughs> if, uh, you know, even if, if uh, you aren't necessarily directly applying it for this purpose. Okay, thanks. Um, David, perhaps you can start. You had uh, two questions, one on how the... Issues of potential liability affect SCI's work, and then the question that Richard just provided. So. Yeah, well, on that first one, there's this great thing about disclaimers. So I think in the, in the software downloads for both Weep and Leap, there is a disclaimer about other people using it, and we're not responsible, so hopefully those would hold up. Um, but in terms of the question about, you know, whether we need, what would be our strategy for engaging in this process legally? So my questions were a bit rhetorical. We are not, an, and we not, we're not an, a litigant or a plaintiff in this dispute. We are being engaged by, basically by the court to provide technical analysis to support an administrative law proceeding, um, which will be challenged by you know, litigants down the road. And so in terms of the, the legal uh, justification for the work that we're doing, it's being filtered through the legal staff at the State Water Resources Control Board. So I, my, 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 my questions were a bit uh, provocative. I hope that we don't need to be hiring a lot of lawyers ourselves, although it's an interesting question. I mean, should SEI have people who understand law and the legal process? And should that be uh, an area of capacity that we're looking to expand or partnerships that we're looking to build with, with people? So um, that's our strategy for handling the legal part of, of, the, of this particular project. I also just want to respond briefly to Jacob and then pass it on down to the others, first to Jenny. Um, I actually saw some of your emails a couple weeks ago about it, thinking about the political economy, and I wrote this desperate email to Annette, and I said, what is political economy? And she sent me some wiki stuff, and I read, did some reading on it. I said, if I don't read about it, I'm going to be exposed as an idiot at some point very soon. And so I did some reading, and I do, you know, if I do understand this concept, it's really about variable economic systems, power structures, and that sort of thing. And by all means, I think we need to be having our analysis be better informed by those considerations. And it seems like one of the ways that we would do that is through the way we deploy these tools within participatory processes and decision-making processes. And you know, what control can we have over of the ways those are structured and the perspectives that are brought to bear in the way the analysis is carried out and the models are run. And that's actually something that's quite, we're quite actively engaged in in the way we're using our models. We're thinking more about how they fit within political uh, participatory decision-making processes than we are about the models themselves. And, and we have some experiences in the U.S. Center that we'd be happy to share with anyone around these ideas of, of robust decision-making and, and participatory experimental design. So, and, and by the way, I'm not the theme leader anymore. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'll hand it over to the theme leader, Jenny. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for that offer. Uh, the Tag Me tool has, uh, the challenge program is, is just wrapping out now. I, thought, I think it was finished actually in December uh, formally. Uh, whilst the, the approach and the way that the work is, was carried out actually continues in the new structure of the CDIR uh, consortium research programs. Um, so Tag Me is, is like a proof of concept at this stage, and we've had these requests of other users to potentially develop it for other technologies and other geographical spaces. And uh, we are also in the process of trying to put the Tagme versions for Limpopo and Volta developed under the challenge program. They will be hosted by uh, the Volta Basin Authority and uh, probably Fandrapan in the Limpopo, which is a you know, research for policy institution. Um, but we will continue to host it also at SEI just for a backup. Uh, so it's available for users and, and to, to, to try it. So you're very welcome. You can go there and try it out for yourselves. Thank you. Any other comments from the panelists on any of the questions raised? Okay. The floor is open once again. Yes, down here. Thank you so much for your presentations. Really, really interesting. My name is Anna Gren and I work for SIDA. I work with um, a number of issues right now with um, scientific research cooperation. And I've had the benefit and the pleasure of working in the Middle East. And I was based in uh, Jerusalem, working with West Bank and Gaza. And um, to Dr. Joyce, I just want to say that I think that your research is, is so important and that you did a great job presenting this extremely complex problem, problematic, the, of the water situation. And um, I wish we would have had this type of research when I was there because we were really trying to uh, discuss the issues related to Area C, to the water rights, to the issues of, um, of water rights and, and the importance of having um, support to capacity development of, of uh, Palestinians, really, and the Palestinian Authority, the, the Water Authority, in terms of um, the need to have uh, people trained in uh, water legality. Um, and I, I think it's excellent that you're working with, uh, with Hebrew University and also with the Israeli government and the Jordanians. And I would hope that, um, and I, it's a question, that, that maybe you're working with um, uh, the Palestinian universities in, in Ramallah and in Gaza. I would um, really suggest that uh, in order to have balance in terms of the knowledge and the capacity, that, that those areas should really be emphasized. And I hope that you, you do that. Okay. Yes, that's right. We, we actually are working with the uh, Najja University in, in Palestine. And I think that it's, it's, you're right, through, that, through the universities and our, our partnerships with them, that I, I think we'll find a way to really um, take forward this idea that I said about exploring the benefits of cooperation. Well, David encouraged me to, to explain that a lot of the work that we are doing in Latin America, we are doing it with university partners. And we think that that's a, that's a very good strategy to really uh, create knowledge that lasts longer before after we we leave the the places where we are working. So uh, that's how we are acting. And just to keep on on the same topic, the SummerNet uh, program that I mentioned in the morning uh, earlier today, um, that's uh, all about research uh, cooperation, um, working with. Uh, the, the program provides grants to researchers based in uh, the Mekong region. Great. We are officially out of time. Um, first, please join me in thanking our, present, our presenters here for a wonderful job.